Ever since Windows Defender has been released, I've been exploring its utility as a security solution. Uh-oh, we have cascading I.O. errors. Mostly without success. As with most things Microsoft makes, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. If for whatever reason you feel compelled to use Windows Defender, in this video we're going to go through how you can make it as robust as humanly possible using advanced security settings, and then we're going to put it against 860 new malware that I've collected recently to see how it fares to achieve decent protection with Windows Defender. It is important to understand that we'll be doing all of this in a virtual test system, and some of the changes we'll be making will negatively affect performance and usability. You will also need an admin account and access to group policy to be able to make some of these changes. But the goal is, at the end of the day, to achieve the best possible security, and we're going to assume that that's the top priority for today. So first things first, of course, real-time protection needs to be turned on. Now, cloud-delivered protection should also be turned on, but the reason it says off over here is because it's managed by our group policy settings, which I'll show you in a bit. And you also want to ensure that you've got tamper protection turned on so that malware can't turn Windows Defender off. Controlled folder access is a very important feature, and I highly recommend that you turn this on and set up all your important folders as protected. I'm not a false optimist. I'm going to be honest here. If you turn this on, this is going to cause false positives. Applications will have trouble accessing files in these locations. But here's the thing. Ouch. <laughs> Through several tests in the past, I've come to realize that Windows Defender is still quite vulnerable to ransomware. So if you're not using the setting, your files are a sitting duck. You also might want to use ransomware data recovery. This is basically setting up OneDrive so that if your local files get infected or encrypted, you can get your data back from the cloud. Now, of course, you want to turn on the firewall, make sure everything's turned on in app and browser control, but we're not focusing on that since our attack factor is going to be different today. We're focusing on Windows Defender and the detection engine, which in my opinion is the most important part. So now let's head over and check out some group policy settings. In order to do that, you just have to search for group policy or GP and it should come up if you have access to it, that is. And as you go ahead and open it, you want to go under Administrative Templates, Windows Components, and as you scroll down, you're going to see Windows Defender Antivirus. The main things that you want to look at is Maps, which is basically Microsoft's cloud. You want to make sure that this is enabled and also to set it up as Advanced Maps. You also want to make sure you have Block at First Sight enabled as a feature. This essentially means that everything you execute is going to be analyzed by their machine learning engine. This is quite important for detecting new malware, so we will turn it on. The next thing you want to look at is MP Engine. So you want to go ahead and open Configure Extended Cloud Check. You want to provide the maximum amount of time that you can afford to lose for a cloud checkup. We're going to set it to 20 seconds. You can set it to more if you don't care about wait times. As I said, not ideal for performance, but we're talking about max security here. Now, the next option is the most important one, and this is to select the cloud protection level. By default, this is not configured, or it's set to the default Windows Defender antivirus blocking level, but you want to go ahead and set it at high plus. As you can see, this is going to aggressively block unknown programs and apply additional protection measures. It will impact client performance, but you know what? Our 860 threats preparing for invasion don't care. So <laughs> go ahead and hit OK. You also want to make sure that you enable detection of potentially unwanted applications or programs, PUPs, PUAs, whatever you like to call it. To do that, you have to launch PowerShell as an administrator. It should load up in system 32. And then all you have to do is type in this command, which says set MP preference dash PUA protection one. And once we've made all these changes, it's very important to restart the system, make sure that Windows Defender is up to date before we actually do any testing. And the same goes for you, the viewer watching along, make sure you reboot your system after applying these settings. The system has rebooted successfully and looks like we're good to go. So the way we're going to conduct this test is using an automation tool called Malix, developed by yours truly, the PC security channel. And we're going to navigate over to a network drive where all our malware is located. 
So we're not turning off Windows Defender, no funny business here. We're directly executing an attack vector from the network to launch these threats on the system. That is exactly what Malix is tasked with doing. And seeing as we're ready, let the testing begin. So far so good, looks like we're maintaining a 100% blocking rate. I'm also going to show you the CPU usage as the test progresses so you can see how much of a toll this is actually taking on our system. As you can see so far, the anti-malware service executable has been taking up 30 to 40% of the CPU. You don't wanna sit here while my i7 is working away. So let's speed it up, shall we? All right, the test is finally complete. And it looks like we only missed four samples. That gives us a final proactive detection of 99.53%. The more concerning thing for me is the CPU usage was well over 50% for a good portion of the time. And this may not be a very realistic configuration for you to run. But if you are in an environment where you need to use Windows Defender and security is a top priority, this is what you gotta do. Now I'm going to restart the system and see if there are any persistent threats that we can find. And we're also going to do some second opinion scans. Look, it's boring. You don't want to sit and stare at the scans anyway. So let's do our editing magic and make it happen. Here's the results. The second opinion scanners did not find anything. Hitman Pro says our system is clean and Norton Power Razor found nothing but a false positive. So all things considered, if you've got one of those 24 core CPUs, you know what settings to use now. <laughs> Okay, I just forgot to mention, now every time Windows boots up, I get this error message. It seems like some kind of malware was partially blocked. So part of it is on the system and it can't find the other part because it was removed by Windows Defender. So you're now doomed to look at this error message every time you load up. Reminds me of Windows XP. Uh-oh, we have cascading IO errors. This reminds me of Windows XP again. Wait a second, our system is now worse than infected. It is haunted. And this malware is going to forever seek its lost brethren. Tune in to the next episode of TPSC, The Rise of the Undead Malware. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will likely make a video about how to harden Windows in general, not just Windows Defender. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. We have a lot of exciting cybersecurity content. And hey, I'm also offering cybersecurity services. So if you're a business who needs help in this area or you'd like to work with us, please get in touch via the email in the description. This is Leo from the PC Security channel. Thank you so much for watching and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.